Hello Internet, this is going to be a very interesting video regarding modern day laptops that uh, a couple of things that I've learned trying to fix this thing. So this laptop, it's a MSI uh, GE66 Raider, very nice laptop, 3080 on board. I think it's got like an i9, very fancy laptop. Originally owner sent it to Northridge Fix uh, saying that it would not post, uh, then it was not fixed. When it got to me, it posted right away. However, I ran into one uh, problem, uh, like I can't boot into the drive. It supports two NVMe, it's got that two, two uh, NVMe slots. So there's one and there's two under the cover. And so the BIOS just wouldn't boot into any of them. The only thing that I was able to boot into was my uh, USB drive with uh, mods and mats for memory testing. So I booted into that uh, and I tested the GPU for memory, everything was fine. But I couldn't boot into um, the uh, Windows 10 uh, installation uh, USB drive for whatever reason. It, ju it just wouldn't boot to anything other than this one drive. So the problem ended up being uh, a very low voltage on the CMOS battery, which is connected here at the top, kind of hidden behind the big battery there. I, I already replaced the battery, so... And then, uh, as a result, the BIOS got corrupted. The BIOS is in here, by the way. And so I reflashed the BIOS. And I was finally able to boot into the Windows 10 or Windows 11 installation USB drive. However, once I loaded the, uh, once the Windows installation started, it would not see any of the drives uh, to be to get installed into. Uh, and so I ran into a problem, and I started, you know, posting some questions on Vlab. And uh, there were a couple of people that were uh, really willing to help us out and kind of explain what's going on. Some of the some of those things that I wasn't aware of because it's a relatively new machine, and I'm still kind of stuck in the good old days where you could just kind of go in, disable UEFI, and enable legacy, and you know all that kind of stuff. And it will allow you to boot from NVMe drive that I that I'm using to boot like all of my computers uh, that I'm testing, but I couldn't boot this particular one. So I couldn't understand what the deal is. And, and, and to make things worse, like I said, when you're in the process of the installation of the operating system, the installer does not see your drives. Uh, so allow me to demonstrate. I'm just going to uh, remove the drive here from this motherboard. This is my uh, own drive that I use all the time. And I'm going to put it in here. So I'm going to remove the drive that I already where I already installed Windows, where it's already working. So I'm going to put this one. So this one has an older uh, legacy uh, type installation of operating system. It'll work on all of my older motherboards. It will work on any of the older laptops. The ones that are allowing you to switch uh, UEFI off and allow it to boot from as a legacy device. And this is actually a very common problem, and there's a lot of misunderstanding going on around the internet about this issue. So that's why I'm doing this video, so I can, um, once I got educated about it, I will educate you as well. So let me go ahead and switch over here so we can kind of see, because I can't get this to display on uh, HDMI port. So if we go into the storage, and then you see your drive is there, so the BIOS is recognizing it, right? But if you go into the boot, your drive is just not there. It's supposed to show up here at the bottom. Here's a, a hidden menu that you can access on this particular laptop that you might find very helpful. You, um, it's, it's a specific combination of keys, but not only the combination of keys, they also have to be pressed in a very specific area. So we, have, we need Shift, Control, Alt, and F2 uh, pressed together, but we have to press them in a certain area of the keyboard because I tried to do it I tried to do it here and it didn't work but if I do shift control alt in here like this then you notice that the screen changed and all of a sudden I have like tons and tons of advanced of advanced menus so we're not going to worry about these menus because they're kind of irrelevant right now so what's relevant is let me go and power this down is that uh, once I got the BIOS flashed uh, I was able to boot into the Windows installer, so let's go ahead and boot into the Windows installer. And then it shows you no drivers whatsoever. And that's that, that was the wall that I hit with my head hard because I couldn't understand 
if the BIOS sees the drive in one place but not in the other, and then the Windows itself doesn't see it, there's actually a fix for that. Apparently, uh, it seems like the, since the system is so new, it, it needs to load drivers for your um, drives. And so the way you do this is you hit this button, load driver, and then we're browsing. And what I'm doing right now is I am browsing that USB drive right there. I am browsing that USB drive from which the uh, Windows installer is running. And I've already put inside of that drive this folder. It's called um, Intel Rapid Storage Thingy Drivers. Okay, so I'm going to expand that. And I think I need to go into the uh, VMD folder. Click OK. And bam, it automatically shows me a couple of options that I can pick. So I just pick the first one. Next. We're waiting a second. And right there. I can see my drive and I can delete the partitions, yada, 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 all that good stuff, which I am not going to do because this particular drive is partitioned. So this particular drive is already ready to go and I'm, it's my daily driver for, the, uh, for my workstation. So obviously I'm not going to screw it up. But I will put in the other drive in there, which I've already installed uh, operating system on using the method that I had just shown you. Very nice laptop, by the way. It looks well, but this time we have a nice laptop to repair. Not sure what was wrong with it, other than the BIOS and the low voltage on the battery. And plug it in, power it on. Let's have a look at what we're seeing here. So we see our storage device still there. And then if we go into the boot, we actually see our drive is uh, finally, finally listed. So, yep, that's uh, basically the thing. That's basically how uh, this laptop got fixed. Well, the bottom line is everything's great. The laptop's working, so the owner's going to be happy. i uh, just waiting for him to uh, ship me the uh, NVMe drive so I can pop that in and make sure that his uh, operating system is, uh, was properly installed in the drive. And if not, then I will have to install it for him just to make sure that everything works great. So other than that, I hope you guys have learned something today. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you later. Don't forget to like the video if you learned anything and subscribe for more awesome repairs. Hopefully this video will serve uh, all of you repair uh, people out there, especially the MSI owners that are having issues like this, which turned out to be there's quite a lot of people out there on forums, on Reddit, and, and all over the place that I've searched for a solution. Uh, English-speaking places found absolutely zero solutions. Then I went to the Russian uh, websites, and as you would expect, those guys... <laughs> Uh, yeah, they know their game. So thank you to all the Russian re laptop repair people out there. And uh, have a blessed day. And uh, goodbye.